Welcome to the Warp. I'm Jack Rita, and happy Halloween. Woo! Uh, in this video, I'm going to be covering the 13 scariest aliens in Cosmic Encounter. And to come up with this list of aliens, uh, there were a couple of different ways that I could have gone. I could have started with just 13 scary looking aliens based on their artwork. I could have also gone with aliens that you would be afraid to be up against in a game of Cosmic Encounter because that would scare you. But ultimately, what I settled on were the 13 aliens whose names are probably most closely associated with the concept of Halloween and things that are scary. Although in some cases, the artwork on some of these aliens is scary, and they're aliens that you definitely don't want to be up against in a game, you know, irrespective of who you're playing. So let's dive in and take a look at these 13 scary aliens in Cosmic Encounter. Our first one is The Claw. And the claw, the artwork for this is kind of scary. <clears throat> this is a Ryan Barger piece, uh, and you can see the claw itself is holding Leviathan, which is another alien that he did the artwork for. And that, uh, the Leviathan, if you will remember, is a uh, planet-sized alien. They're, they're giant. So the claw is even bigger and scarier. So what does it do? This is a pretty fun alien to, to, to play with, and it, it is a scary alien in that it makes the game tense because something's going to happen and you're not sure when. Uh, at the start of the game, the claw player is going to choose one non-negotiate card from their starting hand, and that's going to be their claw, which they will put face down on the sheet, and then they'll draw a card from the deck to replace it. So the claw card is not part of your hand, and other players don't get to look at it. At the start of any regroup phase, you can swap a card from your hand with the claw. Um, but it should be noted that the claw can never be a negotiate card. It always has to be a non-negotiate card. But other than that, there's no restrictions. So once per encounter, when another player plays another copy of the card that you have chosen as your claw, you use your power to reveal the claw. And at the end, or after the end of the current encounter, choose a planet in that player's home system and move it to your home system sending any ships on it to the warp and making it a new home planet for yourself, although you do not get to establish a colony on it. Uh, then return your claw card to your hand and choose a card from your hand to be your new claw. And it could be the same card. Nobody will know for sure. <clears throat> now, each stolen planet in your home system counts as a foreign colony toward the wind. So the planet itself counts as a foreign colony for you, and you can establish a home colony on there as well, uh, subsequent to grabbing it and pulling it into your system. Even if other players are on the planet, it still counts as a foreign colony for you. Um, so, this is an alien that, if you pick the right card as a claw, like an attack eight, because there's so many other attack eights in the game, there's a good chance that somebody at some point will reveal one. Um, certain other cards, maybe like a card zap, there's a few of those, and that's a card that's going to get played, Cosmic Zap as well. Um, you have some flexibility about what that will be, especially because you can swap that card in and out. So it's a fun alien um, to play because it's great to get a free colony every once in a while. Um, and just that tension of uh, like, oh no, you know, what's going to happen? So I like the claw and it is pretty scary. Our next alien is the cult. So the cult uh, is from, and I should point out, the claw is from Cosmic Conflict. The cult came in Cosmic Eons. So the way that the cult works is, as a main player, before allies are invited, you can use your power to offer your opponent membership in the cult, if they're not already a member. If they accept, then they place one of their ships on this sheet, uh, from any of their colonies. And that's a marker so that you know who is a member of the, the cult. Now, members of the cult are bound by the following rules. One, when both main players are in the cult, no alliances are allowed, and all revealed encounter cards that are not negotiates become negotiates. So you're always going to be in a deal situation when you are opposing another member of the cult. Two, when only one main player belongs to the cult, all ships of all members of the cult that are on foreign colonies in the targeted system but not involved in the encounter will count as one each toward the cult member's total. And these ships will go to the warp if the cult member loses. So that's a big deal. So if the cult, somebody in the cult is in an encounter, 
all ships belonging to the cult are going to count towards that encounter's total that are in that same system. And they'll go to the warp if that cult member loses. So, yikes. You know, membership has its privileges, but <laughs> there's, uh, there's some downside as well. Three, a cult member may not willingly ally against another cult member. So that's dice. And then four, a game win for a member of the cult is a win for all members of the cult. Curious. Now, when another member of the cult is a main player, before allies are invited, that player may lose four ships to the warp and discard four cards uh, of their choice from their hand to renounce the cult. Uh, their ship returns to their colony and that player is no longer a member. So you can get out of the cult, but it has a high cost. You're going to lose four cards and four ships in order to get out of it. Um, the cult is a way where everybody can win the game because everybody could potentially be a member of the cult. It is a really wacky alien. Um, so in terms of scariness to have it in the game, if you're somebody who doesn't like to be part of a massive joint win, you are going to be afraid of having the cult in the game because it will try to lure everybody or a lot of the players into the cult so that gets the benefits from that. Um, but one of the scariest parts of it is when uh, you're in an encounter against a non-cult member and you have a lot of ships in that system that are just bystanders. And you know that if your side doesn't win, all of those ships are going to the warp. And that is brutal. So the cult, a very interesting and potentially very scary alien to have in the game. Our next alien is disease. And a disease is a pretty scary concept. Uh, nobody wants a disease, well, most people anyway. Um, and so let's look at this, an interesting alien as well. So you have the power of contagion. Whenever any other player's color or a special destiny card that targets another player is drawn from the destiny deck, you may use this power to infect that player. If you have one or more colonies in the infected player's home system consisting of at least three ships, choosing one of those colonies and take one or more of your ships from it, moving them to any other planet in that system. Your ships coexist when any ships already on the planet, uh, unless a game effect prevents them from doing so. On a wild destiny car, you may only affect the player chosen to be the defense. So, as the disease, you want to, to try to put three or four preferably more than three, ships on your foreign colonies. Because once you've gotten a foreign colony on a planet, when that system comes up again in Destiny, you get to spread your ships from that planet to another planet in that system. And so, yeah, free colonies. Uh, so disease doesn't always get invited as an ally. So you are going to have to work around that. Of course, you, when you're the offense, you want to attack with four ships. Um, and sure, invite everybody so that it's more likely that you win and can get a second encounter so that you can do that again. Because eventually, those Destiny cards are going to come up and you're going to get to spread. It's just uh, it's just a matter of time. Um, and then in terms of trying to get people to invite you as an ally, you can promise to bring fewer than three ships or four ships. Um, so yeah, I'll only bring two ships if you bring me along. And... Um, and of course, if they invite you, you can certainly uh, say that you were lying, but you can be honest about it and then try to just get ships onto those planets later on. So again, it's it's just a, it's a matter of time. Even if you attack with only one ship as, a, as an offensive ally, you can get a couple of ships onto that planet later on. Because remember, anytime your ships are returning to colonies, either from having been a defensive ally or when you get ships out of the warp. Remember, you get one out every regroup. You can put that on a foreign colony, and then, pow, you're going to get that extra colony. Um, maybe several times. I had one game where Disease picked up three colonies that way, and, uh, yeah, they did win the game. So it's a scary alien. Our next alien, and that's from Cosmic Incursion, by the way. So Cosmic Incursion, uh, also from Cosmic Incursion, is Ghoul. And uh, Ghoul is a pretty good, it's not scary, not that scary looking. It kind of looks like a ghost bug <laughs> or something like that. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a really effective alien. So as a main player, after you win an encounter, use this power. For each opposing ship sent to the warp as a result of the encounter, you receive one defender reward. Um, 
either retrieve one of your ships from the warp or draw one card from the deck. And in a game with the reward deck, you can draw um, from, from that deck as well. Um, even though it specifies, uh, it doesn't specify that you can, but uh, that is what the FAQ has uh, determined that you can do to get that. Uh, and it's interesting that this is an alien that specifically just says defender rewards rather than rewards. And I have uh, in my custom set, I actually have a third type of reward uh, card. I've got the regular reward deck. I've got the ultra rewards rewards that came from Cosmic Odyssey. And I have specific ca cards that are defender rewards. Um, and this alien actually lets you get defender rewards as well as the regular ones. Um, I really like Ghoul. I think it can be extremely powerful, especially in a game with the reward deck. Just picking up those cards, um, you're incentivized to win as the defense because you're going to pick up rewards that way. So you always want to play your best cards because you can create a nice uh, feedback loop there where you're getting good stuff and playing good stuff and getting more good stuff. And uh, and ghouls are pretty scary. So um, that's, a, that's a good alien, I think, to include on this list. Uh, our next alien is Invader. Invader is from Cosmic Conflict, and it's an alien that comes with three special destiny cards, Invader destiny cards, that you will shuffle into the destiny deck. Um, so shuffle the three invasion destiny cards into the deck. These destiny cards allow you to have an extra encounter when drawn during another player's turn. After you have an extra encounter due to an invasion destiny card, the player who drew it uh, receives another encounter. So they're not losing anything. You're just getting extra encounters um, that kind of interrupt their turn. In addition to that, as a main player, after an invasion destiny card or a destiny card of your player color is drawn, you may use this power to discard your entire hand and draw a new hand of eight cards before having your extra encounter. Um, use this power once per encounter. So uh, in Invader is incentivized to use up good cards early because you're going to have the opportunity to draw a new hand um, much more frequently than other players. You're going to get those extra encounters. And um, so, yeah, you want to draw the new hands uh, if you don't have great cards in them because you've got a better chance of getting a great card the next time you have a free encounter or any any encounter at all. So Invader is pretty good. Um, yeah, this is pretty scary art, too. Look at that. I think that's a Felicia art right there. And uh, yeah, that would that would scare the pants off of me, I think, if I saw that in a d dark alley, even in a well-lit alley, maybe even more so there. All right, our next alien is from Cosmic uh, Eons, and it is Nightmare. Um, and that's also pretty good, pretty good scary alien art there. So Nightmare is an essence uh, alien. It has a special set of essence cards right here that have the Nightmare on it. So here's how it works. Uh, once per encounter, when a pl main player has declined to invite you to ally, or... Another player is on the winning side of an encounter where you are on the losing side. So two ways that you can you can use your power. You may use this power to place a bad dream from your essence card cache face down near that player. Cannot give a bad dream to a player who already has one. You may reveal a player's bad dream card at any time. That player reads the card and carry out its effects if they apply. Uh, and then the revealed cards are returned to you. So... The bad dreams are, uh, it, it, it's interesting, these are all uh, kind of famous tropes of, of nightmares, and the effects are kind of fun. So this one's called Teeth Falling Out. Uh, if you are revealing an attack card instead of its face value, the card's value is divided by two, rounded down. So again, it's the nightmare player knows that you have the cards there, and they can look at them you know, to remind themselves uh, whenever they want to like, oh, you know, this is what yours does. And so at a, at a key moment, they can say, yes, we're going to reveal that this is your bad dream. And that effect will take place. Seeing the dead. If you are retrieving one ship from the warp during your regroup phase, instead, every other player is retrieving one ship from the warp. So, you know, too bad for you. Running, but getting nowhere. If you are accepting an alliance invitation, instead you are actually declining all invitations. So you can kind of see where this where this is going. It's uh, it's a little bit like Negator in some ways, but uh, uh, out of fuel. If you are starting your second encounter, instead you are actually ending your turn. Uh, naked in public. 
If you are winning the game along with one or more other players, instead, those other players are actually winning without you. Harsh. Uh, lost the way home. If you are agreeing to a deal that involves receiving a colony, instead, you are actually agreeing to a different version of that deal that replaces the colony you would receive with a card at random from the other player's hand. So Nightmare can really screw with other players by putting these down there. And so it's a good incentive for players to invite you to ally and to, and to try to uh, win when you are the ally. And maybe sometimes they don't want to win <laughs> when you're on the other side, uh, or at least try to get into a deal situation. So that way, Nightmare doesn't lose the encounter as an ally. So very scary to have in the game. Our next alien is Parasite. Um, something that uh, I think a lot of people would be afraid of. Um, this is from the base set, The Power to Infest. Unless specifically prevented by another game effect, such as the Force Field Artifact, when it is your turn to ally, you may use this power to ally, sending one to four ships as usual, with one side in an encounter as if you had been invited even when you are not. So Parasite can pretty much always be an ally with one side or another. So you have to worry about where you attack. Uh, if if you're going to be helping Parasite to win the game, you want to see if you can attack a planet that Parasite is already on. That way, even if they do join your side, they're not getting anything from it. Um, or, you know, saving your cosmic saps for, for Parasite uh, towards the end of the game. Um, because that is a scary alien to have in the game. You just can't stop him from joining. You could be all set. You're like, I've got my four colonies. I've got the attack 40. I've got a kicker. I'm I, I can't lose this encounter. And then or, there's Parasite, which is worse if you're at, at, th at three colonies and Parasite's at four. And now you're like, Ugh, I, can't, I have to lose. I can't win this encounter because otherwise Parasite wins and I don't. So that's, um, that's a, it's, a great to, it's great to be Parasite. Not so great to be against it. Um, all right, our next one is from Cosmic Storm, and it is Phantasm. And that's, uh, yeah, that's a pretty scary-looking amalgamation of a bunch of aliens. Um, yeah, you can see which ones you I see Warhawk and uh, Pacifist and, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe a couple others. So, the Power of Instability. As a main player, after encounter cards are revealed, use this power to reveal the top card of the deck. If it is not an encounter card, discard it. If it is an encounter card, replace one of either player's revealed encounter cards with the card from the deck, discarding their replaced card. So Phantasm is interesting. It's a little bit like Chosen, uh, only it fires a little more unpredictably, and it, it really optimizes your... Uh, your choices as the Phantasm, because if you draw a really good card, you can use it to replace your not-so-good card. Or if you draw a really bad encounter card, you can have it replace your opponent's card. So you are increasing your likelihood of winning encounter. The downside to Phantasm is that it's pretty hard for Phantasm to make a deal, because this is a mandatory power. You have to do it. So you could both reveal negotiate cards, and you're like, great, well, let's see what the top of the cosmic deck has to say. Hopefully it's not an encounter card. And if it is, hopefully it's still a negotiate card. Uh, but that really only matters when, when Phantasm wants to make a deal. But most of the time you should want to make a deal because you're going to get something out of it. Um, you know, especially when Phantasm is on defense, it's a great way to get something out of that. But Sometimes what you can do, though, is you can get into a deal situation. So if you have revealed a negotiate card, you know that if you're drawing a top card. If it is another negotiate card, you can use it to re replace your opponent's card, and now you are in a deal situation. So it's not a bad alien. It's a pretty good alien. Most of the time, this is going to work in your favor, but it's, it is hard to, to say, let's, let's make a deal and still be able to make that deal. You're going to worry about that. Um, all right. Similar to Phantasm is Phantom. Um, similar names. The effects are very, very different. So this one is in Cosmic Odyssey. And the way that the Phantom works, Phantom is a, is a revamp of a Mayfair uh, edition alien. So you're going to start the game with one ship from each of your planets on the sheet. Um, power to materialize. As a main player, after cards are revealed, use this power to add two to your encounter total for each ship on this sheet. Your ships in the encounter do not add to your encounter total, but do count for compensation and rewards normally. So 
if you've started with five ships on the sheet, that means that your ships are going to count as 10 in the encounter, two points for each ship. And so you could be attacking with three ships. You won't count those three, but you've got that 10 plus your encounter card. Um, now, this only, it only does that uh, as a main player. So when you're an ally, your ships will, will add normally. But it is nice to be able to have um, a big boost there. Furthermore, when your ships would return to colonies, you may place one or more of them on the sheet instead. So you're not stuck with those five ships. You can add ships to the sheet and increase your total. So if you've got seven ships on there, now you're adding 14 to your side uh, for your ship totals. If you've got eight ships, you're adding 16, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you can take ships off of the sheet to add them to, to the encounter. So you can have fewer than that, and you're not, again, you're not stuck with it. If you need the ships, you can pull those out. Just know that your, your ship total in the encounter is always going to be the number of ships that you have on the sheet times two. Um, so, yeah, Phantom can be a very powerful alien. It's not that scary, but uh, again, when they've got a lot of ships on there, then you're like, oh, I'm not anxious to be in an encounter against them, and I hope that they don't draw my color. So it can be a little bit more tense. All right, from the base set is Shadow. Um, now, Shadow uh, used to be Assassin in its original editions. Uh, they changed it to Shadow to, you know, a little kinder, friendlier version of it. Um, it is still kind of a scary alien. It's one of those slow burn. The game is tense and gets more tense as it goes on. Um, so whenever any other player's color or a special destiny card that targets another player is drawn from destiny, use this power to choose one of that player's ships from any colony of your choice and send it to the warp. On a wild destiny card, you may execute one ship belonging to any player, regardless of who the offense chooses to attack. So you're just going to be picking off people's ships, sending them to the warp. And that means that when people attack on the offense and as an offensive ally, they're going to be more likely to send more ships. Um, three or four, they don't want to send just one ship because that is a prime target for you to execute and get rid of. And then sending more ships means there's more ships at risk. So those games tend to have a lot more ships in the warp. So after a few turns, uh, Shadow is going to be very very impactful on the game. Um, so yeah, you got that power. I like to try to leverage it to, to for invitations uh, and for promises of like, look, I won't single you out. I'll, I'll attack your planets. Um, not attack, but I will zap your ships off of planets where you have a lot of ships. If you keep inviting me, if you agree to make a deal, those sorts of things. So you can be a, a more benevolent shadow, but uh, that artwork is great too. Look at that. That is, that is pretty scary. All right. From Cosmic Odyssey, we have Witch, which is also an essence alien. Um, and that artwork is great, too. And that's Felicia as well with the little uh, voodoo <laughs> loser <laughs> doll. Um, so the way this works is as a main player or ally, after you lose an encounter, use this power to curse one or more opposing players. For each player, choose a curse from your essence card cash and place it face up in front of them. Cannot curse a player who already is cursed. During each regroup phase, each cursed player may place one of their ships from their colonies onto the cursed card. After a cursed card has a number of ships on it equal to the number on the card, all of those ships are sent to the warp and the curse is returned to you. So the essence cards here, um, they have numbers on them and that's the number of ships that it's going to take to get rid of this curse. So these, these essence cards work a little bit differently from your standard essence cards. Uh, they're going to have one of these face up, and each encounter they can put one of their ships on. They're almost like they're researching a tech. Uh, but once they've got, you know, the four ships or however many on there, then those ships go to the warp. So you're also losing ships, uh, and you're having going to have a few encounters where you're going to have a couple of your ships that are sort of out of commission, and then they're going to be in the warp. And so, yeah, it, to be cursed, it has some impact. So it is tense. Let's take a look at some of these. So this one's called Totals. It uh, takes four ships to get rid of it. As a main player, ships on your side subtract from your encounter total instead of adding. So you're not doing anybody any favors there with your ships. Uh, this one is called Attack Card, also four ships. As a main player, before encounter cards are selected, you must reveal the attack card in your hand that has the highest value to all players. So sharing information you maybe don't want uh, everyone to know. This one's the Artifact Curse. 
discard all artifacts in your hand. If you gain an artifact, you must discard it immediately. And that takes three ships to get rid of that one. There's one that does the same thing for flares. This one's the Alliance Curse. You cannot become an ally or invite allies for three ships. So that stinks. This one is win. You cannot win the game until you get rid of this curse. So similar to Nightmare, it, uh, it is a bit of a nightmare. Nightmare, you didn't know what it was going to be, at least with which you do know. And you have some agency over how long you're going to have that curse. You just got to commit some ships to it. Uh, but, you know, if you've got Shadow in the game, can Shadow zap ships off of there? Well, Shadow says um, any of their colonies. So, no, you're okay there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, if you're pulling ships off of your colonies to put on your curse and Shadow is also zapping ships and you, you're you losing encounters, yeah, it, it makes for a very fun, intense, and awful game. All right, next up we've got Zombie. This is the actual, the alternate version of Zombie. As you can see, it's got very different uh, template there. So this is the one that comes in Cosmic Odyssey. Uh, you have the power of reanimation. During each regroup phase, use this power to free all of your ships in the warp, sending them to one of your home planets, including a planet without a home colony. And additionally, you may free any number of another player's ships from the warp as part of a deal with that player. So the original zombie is when you are when you lost encounter, your ships that were in that encounter don't go to the warp, they go to your other colonies. But you would still, like, if, if I attacked that zombie and they lost, they would have to vacate one of their planets and those ships would go to the other one. Uh, and if they didn't regain that planet and another person attacked them, they would lose it. And if it happened three times, they've lost their power. This zombie, very hard for them to lose their power because every regroup phase, all of their ships are coming out of the warp and they're going to one of their home planets, including one where they didn't have any ships. So they can always regain their home planets. Um, they're, they're probably never going to lose their power. Um, and they can get compensation. So you get compensation for each ship that goes to the warp. The original zombie didn't get compensation because their ships didn't go to the warp. But this one does get the compensation. So I think overall it's a better alien. So that is 12. The 13th alien that I've included is Assessor. Now, Assessor, <laughs> no one dresses up as a scary Assessor, although maybe they should. But there's there are a few things as scary as having uh, an audit <laughs> or being assessed uh, legally. So... I thought it would be fun to include that one as the 13th alien. So this is from Cosmic Odyssey. Um, after another player, as the offense or an ally, sends more than one ship into the encounter, uses power to draw a card at random from that player's hand and place it face down on this sheet. Uh, you can look at those cards. They're not part of your hand. At the end of the encounter, if you have eight or more cards on your sheet, you get to add one of your choice to your hand and discard the rest. But uh, subsequent or prior to that, actually, when any other player would draw cards as rewards or as part of a new hand, you may give that player one card of your choice from this sheet as a refund instead of one of the cards they would gain. So if they're drawing a new hand, uh, they would only draw seven cards because you're giving them something from the sheet, usually a terrible card. Uh, but again, like with everything in Cosmic Encounter, uh, things are negotiable. So when I play Assessor, I try to say, look, invite me along. Uh, when you're getting your first refund, I'm setting a card, a really, uh, setting aside a really good card here. That will be your one of your cards when you get a reward. It's a it's a high attack card, or if you're an alien like uh, pacifist that wants negotiates, it's like I can give you a negotiate. Same thing with diplomat. I can get you one of these cards. Empath wants negotiates. Um, you know, uh, loser wants uh, negotiates or low attack cards. So. Um, you can you can use it as a way to maneuver uh, players into inviting you or to doing your bidding. Um, or you can get yourself a really good card if you just keep piling up stuff on there. So if you got a if you got a game with uh, Shadow in it and Assessor, well Shadow means that you don't want to send just one ship, but Assessor means if you send more than one ship, you're going to be assessed. So I like to have those in there. Might be fun to do a big combo card of, uh, of the Halloween edition of the aliens. So let me know what you think is the scariest alien. I want to know what you think the scariest art for an alien is, the scariest uh, name of an alien is, and why, uh, and the scariest alien to have in a game if you're not the one controlling it. Um, so 
that is it for this one. Everyone have a happy Halloween, and uh, thanks for watching.